have a full page of testimonies on your website. And you might also do a LinkedIn profile, which we don't have time to cover today. But LinkedIn is a huge crossover for you. It demonstrates credibility again. And all of you should have a LinkedIn presence. And if you don't, talk to me after. We'll, we'll figure out how to get you on. Okay? But it's something you need to do. It supports your website. Now, if you don't have a great website, you need to get a great website. That's like your first number one job today. If you don't have a great capability statement, get a great capability statement as soon as you can. Okay, the last thing that needs to be on the capability statement is obviously your contact information. You would not believe how many companies forget to put a point of contact on there. So I have the responsibility today of selecting or calling, no, I didn't get to select, of, of calling, calling and texting the 10 DVBEs that will be in this room in the next 20 minutes. And you know, three of them didn't have their cell number on there or the point of contact. You need to make it easy for them to contact you. Your website should have contact information on every page. Your capability statement should have your contact information beautifully centered or, or nicely uh, right justified or left justified, whatever your preference is, at the top. And then maybe horizontal on the bottom. You need to have your contact information. You need to make it easy to get, you need to make it easy for them to get hold. Okay? Let's keep going. All right. So we talked a little bit about market research. We don't have a lot of time to go on to that. But once you're at this stage, your next step is market research. You need to identify your customers. At all of the three levels that we talked about today, go into the right, the right place and do your research. Because you want to then impress them with what you know about what they're buying. So I was fortunate. I, Karen came to me and said, you know somebody that can do this. But at the same time, it was incumbent on me to know that that's what they wanted. Does that make sense? So I needed to do my research to make sure what AT&T was buying. You need to know exactly what your customers are buying. And you need to know exactly, to the best of your ability, who the incumbent on it is, what their award was, how long it's good for. So at the federal level, how many of you have heard of the IDIQ? Very good, a couple of people. The IDIQ is the best contract you can get. It's called indefinite delivery, indefinite quantity. It's typically what they call a base plus four-year option. That is a sweet deal. So you pre-negotiate a contract, typically, for your base. And then after you've been on the job a year, they renew the option. They renew the option the second year, and so on and so forth. And the only way you lose that contract is what? Non-performance. Non-performance and non-conformance. So every agency that we work with is going to demand if they're a prevailing wage organization or a union organization, you're going to need to, to have the proper compliance with that. We have a whole other seminar that we teach on that, but that's a different issue. Just understand, if it's prevailing wage, you can't get around it. You must pay a prevailing wage, right? <laughs> Everybody knows that if you've done that before. If it's a union job, there are some options. There's a PSA and a, what's the other one? PSA and PLA, thank you. And a PLA. Those are just labor agreements, basically. Yes, sir. I just want to make a couple comments about the IDIQ. We have several. Uh, we have several IDIQs, and then the first of all, if you never have it, you're not going to get it straight off. You have to set a contract right. uh, for years to get your first IDIQ. Um, second is a fishing license for a very large pond, but you still have to fish, and sometimes they have to stock the pond, and the IDIQ does nothing. Other times, they take off like a banshee. So That's a good it's, it's a good it's a good vehicle. Excellent testimony. You know, and I think the bottom line here is I think what we're actually talking about is the fact that even after you get into a nice relationship, you still must market. You still must be out there. You still must go to the conferences. You still got to be on their base when they have a uh, an industry day. 
I mean, you've got to. We'll get some questions. Just one, just one more thing. Just get on multiple teams too, because yeah. not all of them hit it with the IBIQ. That's really good. Did everybody hear that one? We, we weren't really going to get to that today until just throwing it out there. There's a whole concept of teams, getting on teams for federal contracts. So that's something we can talk about later if you're interested in another, in, maybe in the afternoon. Moving on. So the most important thing here is once you've identified your customer, you must market it. Okay? And that marketing is building upon that relationship and then getting an opportunity to come in and meet with the people that you've met with, and then once you get through that process, have them introduce you to the buyers, match you to the requirements. But the key thing, I want to leave you with three things as we close today. The most important thing that you want to present today in your matchmaking session, if you know what they are buying, is that you have a solution to what they're buying. The federal government, the state government, and all of our agencies and utilities today are all looking for solutions. They're not looking to do business with you because you're a DVBE. They're looking for what you can provide for them, how you're going to help them to meet what they're looking for you to accomplish, or what they're looking to accomplish. That's number one. Number two, you must be prepared. Your website, your capability statements, your certifications all have to be in order. They've got to be very, very attractive. They've got to be eye-catching. They've got to be able to jump out at the, the reader and show them that you are capable, confident, have the capacity and the credibility to do what they are looking for you to do. And the third most important thing then is that you must market it. Okay? So today what I'm going to do is uh, we won't have time to cover that, but you can tell me we're going to cover the teams and everything. So I'm William Osgood, I have a company called CFR and Associates, and what we'd like to do today, if anybody's interested, I have a couple of other presentations that we'll be happy to send out by email if you want to include this one. Um, all you have to do is give me your card. I have my cards up here. I also have a couple CDs that if you want to purchase, you can purchase as well on the website. Um, many of them are related to growing your business. And then finally, and most importantly, what I want to do is we really want to offer um, our veterans today an opportunity Number one, to, to become a part of elite SDVOB network in any area. We have chapters in Los Angeles. We have chapters in, we have chapters in uh, Orange County and San Diego and Northern California. So we have four chapters. As a matter of fact, we have, are you the chapter president now? Are you? No. Board, member. Board, member, we board member for, um, for the Northern California chapter and I'm the vice president of the Los Angeles chapter. So, I want to invite you to that. And then anybody that's interested in a complimentary consultation, just kind of give me a card and write that out there, and I'll be happy to follow up with you next week. We'll get one book. We'll kind of